For thousands of years, native people have been making pottery in the desert southwest. The technique was known as paddle and anvil pottery. Potters were able to make large, thin-walled vessels to store seeds and nuts, keeping them safe from rodents and insects. Only a handful of pots have been found tucked away in rock shelters. These pots seen here are the last remnants found of this lost art form. Other traces are found in shards that litter the desert floor. These reflections from the past have inspired an artist to revive this technique. Tony Sores has been making pottery since he was a young boy. In this video, he will document the process of creating a pot, also known as an olla. First, a clay source has to be located. The clay is dug using a wooden stick. In the desert, clays are almost always found in a dry form. Only enough clay is gathered for the piece that will be made. It would have been a heavy burden to carry. The clay is found in pure form and must be ground on a matate into a fine powder. The clay must be tempered with sand, volcanic ash, and or crushed pot shards, also commonly known as grog. The mixture consists of three parts clay, one part temper. Temper is used to give the clay plasticity, strength, and most importantly, keeps the pot from cracking during the drying and firing process. Once this clay and temper are ground together, water is added to the mix.
The clay is then wedged into the consistency of bread dough. Sometimes the clay is covered and left to age for a few days in a pot before using. A shallow depression is formed in the sand using the form pot. This supports the base of the new pot that is being made. The depression is covered with deer hide. The form pot is covered with cloth to keep the base of the new pot from sticking to it. A ball of clay is shaped into a tortilla and pounded onto the form pot. Tony pounds the clay with his fist or anvil stone to form a ripple of clay that rolls down the form pot. Water is added to keep the paddle from sticking. Many of the old pots were extremely thin, some as thin as three millimeters. Around 1976, when Tony was seven, his grandmother taught him how to make pots using commercial clay and firing them with charcoal. While playing and shooting his bow and arrow in the desert, Tony noticed small broken shards of pottery on the desert floor. Knowing that this pottery was very old and different than commercial clay, he asked his grandmother, where did people get clay before there were stores to buy it in? His grandmother told him that it was in the desert somewhere and that he had to find it. This sparked his interest. He began experimenting by adding desert sand with commercial clay to mimic the shards that he saw in the desert, also trying to figure out how to make a round bottom pot from a flat table service. All the old Oyas had round bottoms. The photo in the beginning of this video was his first clue as to how they were made. Most of Tony's early pots were not much bigger than a grapefruit or small melon. He noticed his pots never seemed to have the same color or surface texture as the ones he saw in museums and books. He continued searching for a clay source. One day, after a rainstorm while playing in a wash, he discovered wet clay. He was then able to recognize clay easily. With this discovery, Tony found clay sources everywhere, each source having its own characteristics.